our second chances were given by a dying breath. The first resurrection is a feeling you can never forget. A deep peace that you are one with, as if the nothingness that surrounds you lulls your tired body. Even though we are not permitted to know our deaths or the lives that granted them purpose, I can still recall the feeling of that spark in the darkness, finding my hand and gently whispering to a purpose within me as it slowly guided me to the surface. Then, subtle pops of centuries-old bones and the labored, shallow breathing of lungs that haven't taken air in millennia. Every death afterwards feels as though you aren't within those depths, aren't a part of them. It feels as though the pieces are being picked up just on the other side of the veil, and carefully, almost lovingly, putting the pieces of your puzzle back into place. It's a feeling that I haven't felt in a long time. I can't count the amount of times I've been awakened from my sleep. Just as the light fades from my eyes, and the tranquility calls me home, only to find myself where I first rose all those years ago. It's been repeated so many times that I can't even recall when I even started retaining my memories. But with each death, I've been learning from my mistakes, growing, getting stronger. And with each passing victory, I'm reminded of why I push so hard forward. Lightless or not, I swore to carry the city's beating heart with me, holding the weight on my shoulders so for a moment, maybe they won't have to. Destiny, humanity's journey is a never-ending battle against death, tragedy, and loss. Every day is a struggle for survival, a fight against the raging storm that threatens our very existence from all sides. But there was a time, almost beyond memory, when we soared higher than our earthly bounds, carried aloft on the iridescent wings of an entity beyond comprehension, the golden age of humanity, a time of unparalleled technological marvels and prosperity, where human lifespan was triple and the impossible became possible. Yet, as the laws of nature dictate, for every action there must be an equal and opposite reaction. The brightest lights, they say, cast the darkest shadows. And so, when the shroud of darkness descended, death's cold hands choked the life from our civilization, edging us towards absolute oblivion. However, it was not our destiny to embrace that fate. In a miraculous moment, the Traveler intervened at the eleventh hour, gifting us with a second chance. The Traveler pushed back the darkness, their struggle shaking the stars and leaving both entities wounded and in a state of dormancy. And from the Traveler's dying breath, the ghosts were sent forth to raise immortal warriors, wielding the light, turning them into weapons capable of defending the last vestiges of humanity from the evils that were sure to come. Thus, from the ashes of destruction and ruin, our legacy was born.
the light provides strength, power, the ability to rise in the face of overwhelming defeat. But what if the light were to falter? What if your platform over the forces of creation and entropy crumbled beneath you? Would you stand in the face of insurmountable odds or surrender to assured destruction? What would you do if you only had one life left to live? This run is lightless. No abilities, no double jumps, and more importantly, no revives. Death is permanent and signals a brand new character. The goal was simple, start at the beginning of the game and make my way through each campaign until I arrived outside of Sabathun's bedchambers where I would kick down the door and then the moment she lets her guard down instantly begin steaming her fucking hams. Get ready to receive some holy spirit. <laughs> This journey would see us descending into the darkest, most depraved depths of Bungie's game design, as they use only the most premium of content in Destiny that is so glorious, it is sure to make angels cry, as they do things like make you do fucking public events. I swear to God I'd have more fun eating a mattress. Then we would tussle with the muscle as we went head to head with Aramis, the Kel of Darkness, and put a stop to the rising rebellion on Europa that seeks to snuff out the light. In a campaign that is loaded with the only thing that truly matters in this dark, depressing world of ours. Holy mother of milkies. <laughs> then we would put some fucking hair on our chest and finally stop taking the route that was made for schoolgirls by tackling the Witch Queen on Legendary, a DLC that perfectly makes use of Bungie's advanced movement and insanely deep build crafting to create the most memorable Destiny experience we've had to date. Or at least it would have had I not immediately ruined all of that finely tuned gameplay by nerfing myself harder than Bungie nerfs us all once we find something even remotely viable. In my time in the Witch Queen, I've activated a total of three neurons in my brain and burned away painful hours of my life I can never get back for your sick enjoyment by twisting my nipples with the might of a fucking demigod. I've completed all of the Witch Queen without double jumping, with only supers, white gear, no grenade shatter dive, and arc soul without taking damage, and finally with only a damage traveler's chosen on legendary. All of this in my never-ending quest to discover why a baking soda and vinegar enema would be more enjoyable experience than half the shit I've done in Destiny. As a professional smooth brain connoisseur, I'd like to believe I've pushed the boundaries of what is possible when you stand your ground and ditch those pesky things you call thoughts in favor of growing a spinal column and acting off of sheer impulse. Lightless was sure to become an achievement that would raise claim to being my magnum opus, solidifying the fact that the power of Walmart Jesus and his Hot Wheels looking at can and would triumph over seemingly insurmountable odds. But when things were heating up and the deck was shaping up to be a winning hand before me. The Flatlanders conspiracy theorists once again led someone astray, as I trusted their teachings that you could fall onto flat ground at any speed and you will survive due to the built-in one-shot protection in the game, causing my donkey ass to shatter nearly every fucking bone in my frail homunculus body. It was on this dark day that at the death screen I vowed I would return with a vengeance and do nearly 3,000 ankle raises in order to not get clowned on the basketball court by a 10-foot drop once again. Now, I'm an anemic destiny YouTuber, pretty much the weakest brand of human you can get. Got that gamer phenotype. <laughs> Blood cell count so low I stand up too fast and it's almost curtains. Got the goddamn structural integrity of a fucking grape. And I swear to god I could've survived a fall like that. But with my fate sealed and my hopes and dreams annihilated by some shitty cabal engineering all hope was seemingly lost. But as it is written in many of my challenge videos over the course of the past year that we do not lie down and accept defeat in our darkest hours. When the going gets tough you have a two hour cry session in the shower and return at peak efficiency. The ancient Riley Reloaded text says it clear. We do a little rising to the occasion. So I put my head down, busted out the Dead Sea Scrolls, deciphering every destiny secret they could unravel before me as to not suffer another Watashiwa on my penis. After suffering eight hours of excruciating Shadowkeep gameplay and step back into destiny once again to polish off my good work. Our story once again begins in one of my favorite moments in destiny history. A beautiful intro to begin a legendary adventure of glory, prestige, and 90% of your gameplay being compromised of scrapping nearly everything in fucking existence. I scrapped 200 weapons. How the hell am I still poor on resources? <laughs> we bear witness to the very first fire team made up of Bezos, that hit new cologne, Elon's Musk, and Zuckerbot as they finally descend from their moon base to laugh at us poor people, and we step forth into one of the most dangerous and hostile of alien worlds. 
I couldn't imagine the pitch that was actually given to these astronauts, though, when they were getting briefed. All right, listen, lads. We found a planet-sized entity on top of Mars, and it's just floating there menacingly. We're gonna send you to Mars to do some scientific tests on it. All right, what kind of tests are, uh, are we talking about? The American kind. <laughs> I don't think this is a proper way to greet alien life. There's gotta be another way. Bro, it's a giant planet-sized orb. Probably just crush your yee-yee-looking ass. Read a fucking book sometime. <laughs> what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Please, tell me. I'm actually very scared. But honestly, this is one of my favorite moments in Destiny, thanks to all the nostalgia that comes flooding back into my veins every time I watch it. It's like a glimpse into the past that is somehow both beautiful and terrifying knowing how much has changed since this event. I was but a wee lad the first time I saw this, grounding for green and white engrams like the dirty vagrant I was. And now all my guns and armor are purple, with glorious gold borders encircled around them. You know, even my pants are purple, because brother, this booty is straight up legendary. Oh! <laughs> Everything in this is immaculate. It highlights the willingness of humanity to go forward into danger, to explore the unknown and take on new horizons. It's full of intrigue, a beautiful score, and mystery. But since at this point I've ran hundreds of challenges that have all been about a single campaign like Beyond Light or The Witch Queen, and then I spend about the next 30 minutes just doing the new light intro, I ported my gear over at the most inoptimal time, ruining one of the most jaw-dropping scenes in the entire cinematic by entering my character screen and slapping on my gear and weapons, then awaken from my grave like a professional linebacker and race towards the dam. The fallen in here should have just let me pass instead of jump scaring the guardian with thousands of hours of weapons training. I mean, just look at what I did to this dreg hiding in the shadows in the beginning. He's just minding his own business, chilling in the dark, when I bust out the whisper of the worm and beam nearly 109,000 damage directly into his frontal cortex. You're gonna love how I'm fresh out of the grave and bust out the god I crammed into a sniper rifle. I'm rewatching this gameplay of me ripping through the intro area. It is absolutely disgusting what I did in there. This shit wasn't just a business transaction. In a court, you couldn't even rule this as self defense. This was angry, downright personal. A good old fashioned, oh boy, here I go committing war crimes again on the Elixney people. If I was in Elixney, I would just lie down and play dead. I'd realize right quick that I absolutely don't got the fucking gravy for these potatoes. We then roll up on Shaw, hand me that fucking gun because you look like you're 12, and I head off to once again violate the Geneva suggestions. In these opening missions, as I take my fall damage aggression out on the hive, I complete the schism mission so I won't be forced to do it later when I need to talk to Shaw, hang up the guardian act because you let all your immortal friends somehow die. At this point, I'm finally free to begin shadow keeping beyond light, making my way to the Witch Queen. Now, I won't go through shadow keep again because it's a couple breathtaking moments sprinkled on top of a diarrhea bounty grind. I say that because I'm a long time Destiny player. Bungie has to full on goatsy themselves to impress this jaded ass warlock main. Is that a dog? Never mind. <laughs> Which they've absolutely been doing lately. I love the new dungeons, raids, and any seasonal content because Bungie has been putting that chef's kiss and tender love and care into pretty much everything they're creating now. But this entire DLC comes from the dark timeline we split into, which would have never happened had we not shot that damned gorilla. One thing I can see immediately is that the inhibitions are off. When I first played through the Shadowkeep campaign, I was timid and shy at nearly every encounter because I have no idea what to expect or how durable my fucking ankles were. But from my brief jog through the Witch Queen, I knew that all the prior content was ripped straight out of Weenie Hut Juniors. You could sneeze in the general vicinity of an enemy and watch their limbs blow apart. I ripped the band-aid right off, pulled the sheets right off the fucking corner of his mattress. This time, I was a sight to behold, because the only thing more agonizing than losing all of your momentum to conspiracy theorists in a calcium deficiency is having to deal with the surprise vasectomy that playing through Shadowkeep is. But in my failings, I knew the only way to become a legend was to move quick, to strike even faster than Mach 8, to strike at the speed of light. But the problem with moving faster than light is that you only live in darkness. <laughs> I begin taking this entire DLC at reckless abandon. I'm killing quick and unleashing nearly nine years of destiny mastery upon my foes. I become so efficient that I've managed to knock a solid hour off my overall shadow keep time, bringing this entire run to only an hour and 45 minutes in length. I do everything as I did the first time. I came through here, eager edging jumps, waiting to be joining allies in the strike, but all of that prior knowledge about how this campaign could be most efficiently completed couldn't prepare me for my greatest enemy. My one true weakness that when placed in my way will cut all momentum and immediately have me quaking in my stylish purple boots. Right before you're about to get the good suck into the pyramid so they can beam nearly every time the guardians got their asses kicked into your brain. For some reason, I do this shit. It beckons us to come. 
I drop onto the first ledge with so much force you could have sworn I tied cinder blocks to my ankles. Which, uh, yeah, it slightly injures me a bit. <laughs> you say I barely even felt it. But for some reason, I had the fucking confidence of a YouTube pickup artist and flung myself off thinking, yeah, I can make it. God damn it, Riley, when will you learn? Then just like that, two more hours of my life were gone, reduced to atoms. In a sick game of fate, cruel twisted poetry, my life was once again snuffed out in much the same way it was the first time. I sat back and thought to myself, reflecting on the events of that night and exactly how I got here. But you know how this old song and dance goes when it comes to Riley Reloaded. Loss is just a bump in the road to victory. We gotta get this bread. The cream always rises to the top. You know they think I have testicular cancer because of the abnormal way my sack is growing. <laughs> I made that a picture. I started sending it to everybody with me lying on the floor when I showed out my PC. And it was like, yep, <laughs> I'm amazed YouTube still allows me to have ads. So I once again commit myself to the rise and grind. I respond to the Elixir's presence with yet more violence. Talk to Shaw handjobs and rocket towards my destiny. This time, we enter the pyramid, kill the nightmares of our past, and witness the darkness, cryptic attempts at communication. All you gotta say is, hey, shit lips, I heard you like loot, and next thing you know, I'm dropping a Nova bomb at the local Chuck E. Cheese. Instead, they decide to be all creepy and shit. Basically clones my donkey ass and talk to me. Bad move, asshole. I'm the last son of a bitch I wanna talk to. If you really wanted to convert me, all you'd have to say is, hey, we got that taken shader. And I'd be all like, for real? Sign me the fuck up. After completing Shadow Keeper, it was finally time to move on to Beyond Life. Thankfully, Bungie once again hadn't yet decided to crank it up to 11, meaning I could realistically stroll through the campaign. Beyond Light is actually a good time. There's a lot of story moments and fun interactions that make it an enjoyable experience. Thanks to all the learning and demon-like combat ability I've been developing, I decided it was time to upgrade the fashion. No more were we the timid guardian that walked out of Shadowkeep. Now we were the cataclysmic event. Even without the light, something to remember is that guardians are advanced weapons experts with extensive training in combat. I've been trying to find a who would win in a fight, Geralt or Monster Hunter style fight against Guardians, and another entity, but I'm yet to find one strong enough to take them on. Unless they're in their own universe where they get smoked all the time. Remember the moon? Can't have shit on the moon. <laughs> they're kind of hard to kill. I remember reading a neat piece of lore where characters were concerned for our players' mental well-being, because ever since they first rose from the grave, they've barely taken a moment from fighting, and spend 90% of their time with their fingers squeezing a trigger. And I gotta say, after spending about 5 Five minutes in an LFG lobby, I too am concerned for the player base's mental well-being. In order to raid with me, you need to know what to do, graduated with a 4.0 GPA, can levitate on command and be blessed with the divinity of a fucking god. What's that? You only have three out of the four? Think fast, chuckle nuts. Also must run well in div. God damn it. <laughs> Born to Nova, forced to well. It's in this DLC that I became a straight up monster, a killer, a downright felon pop pop by busting out the forerunner. This gun was as though Joe Blackburn himself descended from Bungie HQ to give Papa Rye a tender kiss on the cheek and a raking of his mustache across my forehead. It overhauls your killing power tenfold by giving you access to a Grenade. I love the Forerunner because I was a monster in Halo with the Magnum, beating all games on Legendary with pretty much only the Wombo Combo. The good old plasma pistol charge shot to knock the shields off and the Magnum to finalize the flatline. When I put this gun on, it's like I'm back in time, stomping around in my Master Chief pants. Master Chief, you mind telling me what you're doing in the nurse's office? I threw up. Experiencing a different type of physics thing in Bungie's engine as I stood on top of a chopper and watched my soul get vacated from my body. But much like the previous DLC, I once again show no mercy as my titan has become a certified killer. You know what they say, pressure, pressure creates diamonds. And my titan has become harder than me every time Elsie Bray is on screen. And thanks to the increase in killing power, I blow through this entire campaign in only two hours. I pass through everything in this DLC with the gaming prowess of Esoteric on Crystal Meth. I don't know if this is a uniquely me thing in Destiny, but normally I like to run builds that are just fun to use, experiment with guns, and get a little stinky with it. You might catch me chilling in a lobby, wearing a damaged Traveler's Chosen, playing the meme, but 90% of the games I play with other players are people always telling me, you're dong water, trash kid, your build sucks, it won't work, get out of my game, get out of my game. Sure. Now if you're in master content, where everything needs to be perfect to complete, I understand completely, but my guy, this is a strike, I can fart in their general direction, and they don't die from poison damage. We all know that we're gonna min-max our damage, but as it is written in Destiny, we all want 
wind up slaves to that immunity phase. What if you wanted to farm quick, but the bungee got set immune? With that being said though, as a professional dress wearing warlock main, nothing hits harder than a synergistic build. Either way, I stare down the kell of darkness without as much as a second thought. Because think twice, buddy, I don't even think once. Aramis! Vibe check! <laughs> oh, you failed. But with Beyond Light complete and the kell of darkness once again out of my way, I could finally begin my greatest challenge yet. Ah, the witch queen. The coup de gras. Where after all this time, I would finally take my rightful place among Destiny legends as he who completed Destiny 2, Lightless. Look at Savathun's ship. She's got so much more impressive things than me. Makes me feel inferior just being in her presence. She's living lavish with her own ship while I live like a rat, scrounging the ruins for purples. Where's my cool ship? Helm doesn't count. They don't say board Riley's helm, they say the helm. Where the fuck am I gonna put the jacuzzi? Can you believe we don't have a jacuzzi? <laughs> just kidding, I'm, I'm a D2 player. We don't bathe. I would actually love a room in Destiny where I could place one of my eight title SMGs or one of my thousands of fucking blowouts I got during the Iron Banner video on the wall. Either way, though, I race towards the Cabal and I'm actually surprised at how heavy I hit in the Legend campaign. I destroy turrets pretty damn fast and with how many turtles I'm cooking, it's enough to make Mario grow without a mushroom. Words cannot describe how powerful I feel with the ability to chuck a grenade now. The fucking gloves were off. Mattel was his name. And Hot Wheels Fury was Papa Rye's game. My arsenal was finely tuned for this moment. I've spent a good bit of time putting together what I would need in order to delete most enemies from the game. And the answer to 90% of my problems was BULLET! Some people think they can outsmart me. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I've yet to meet one that can outsmart a bullet. I kill the engineers and one more time for old time's sake as we're rapidly approaching Lightfall, which in its own right will open up a new wave of brain damage plays. I lightless tighten my nuts, ruin our relationship further with Keitel's forces by kneeing the entire operation in the cabals, struggle to dunk the fusion cells because with the athleticism of a depressed chihuahua, I cannot get to the other side of the room. I hop around the room looking for a way to make it possible, looking like a clown as I try to piece together this puzzle, but thankfully I discovered you can use this to jump across and I dunked the cell. Some more of the hungry hungry hippos try to eat all my marbles but I'm an advocate of the vacate their souls from their corporeal form first, ask questions later philosophy. After the fusion cells activate the gun, it is time to enter the scariest part of the entire Witch Queen DLC. That which broke me all those months ago. The pie? Oh the humanity! The pipes! The Cabal may have perfected light-suppressing technology, but they honestly over-engineered a solution to their guardian problem, because all they had to do was make a floor that looks perfectly flat, but it is indeed a fucking two-degree angle, and I swear 90% of guardians would be on the ground screaming out in agony. What was it? Like can't heal these emotional wounds. Never gonna trust a flat surface in my life again. But this time, I came prepared. I took this moment of failure into myself to improvise. Adapt. Come on this challenge. And I wasn't about to spare any of the one brain cell I pulled out of the confinement to learn a new technique. Even so, I'm very cautious as I approach the fall. People told me, Papa Rai, if you guard with a sword, you'll survive it. But you see, that's a contradiction. That's how they get you. People tell me that one-shot protection from falls exists in the game, as long as you land on flat ground. But then they also tell me that you need a sword in order to survive falls like that. You can't trust these people from the flat landing conspiracy theorists. Next, they're gonna tell me the earth is flat when we all know it's a cube. <laughs> I was so cautious that I even equipped Stronghold as to spare my ankles from yet another excruciating defeat and took my leap of faith. Now believe me when I said this was beautiful. With glory and precision, I landed without so much as a tickle on the taint. I then activate the universal sign of happiness in the Destiny universe. The ancient ritual consisting of a swift bend of the knee and a hardening of the glutes. With this victory, you could have sworn I worked at a walnut factory. Because Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. What the fuck is this script? Clearing out the engine bay with this loadout proves to be a sick, cruel joke. If you even slightly resemble a ninja turtle, it was over before I knew it even began, as my battle-hardened titan was so shack nasty in there, it was straight up poetry. I dance on the elevator and beat the ever-loving fuck out of the scions in the command center for the egregious crime of simply existing in my presence, then headed off towards the gun to launch myself at Savathun's ship. Now physics and destiny is enough to put the fear of God into any player, and even though I know is very finely tuned so my ankles are safe. It didn't stop my sphincter from turning into a vice grip. Even so, the Hot Wheels bullet fired like the good munition he was, and I land on Mommy Thune's ship flawlessly. I begin racing through the beautiful ship, equip Eager Edge to cross the gap, and <laughs> oh, fuck. I almost shat my soul up in no time for fear when there's an entire Witch Queen campaign to clear. Just
just beyond the jump, I find myself in a tunnel where I am swiftly cucked by Uncle Bungie as they placed a tiny waterfall in my way. Even with max mobility, I just slam my nose into the ridge. I have heavy ammo still in my sword, so there's a chance if I bust out the old reliable Salvation's Grip, I might still have some ammo in the conversion. But in Destiny, one thing that rings true is that ammo conversion for switching your heavy is a wild card. Sometimes when you switch your heavy, you're straight up bawling with enough ammo to decimate a legion of hives to being only given a single bullet. But that's a dice I'm willing to roll. <laughs> Bungie descended from their throne in Olympus to give me the gift of a single bullet in my Salvation's Grip, which either way I flawlessly use to ascend the waterfall. We then get our first run-in with the hive, wielding the light. I panic in this hallway as the knight has a line gun that shreds me quickly, but thankfully I actually still hit pretty hard to their shields, even with a solar weapon. This encounter goes well as I take my time, firing from the back and moving in when things are safe. I'm not afraid to slippery skedaddle when my health gets low, a move that is sure to piss up even the best of crucible vets when they pop their super. This encounter goes well as I just take my time, firing from the back. Even though this challenge is pretty tough, it's not for the reasons you would expect. With my arsenal being finely tuned, the damage I'm dealing is unrelenting. The biggest problem in the game comes from the fact that Bungie went all out on the verticality to make use of advanced movement, something they've seemed to double down on in Lightfall, meaning that this is less about sheer combat capability and more about problem solving. I like watching all the little ways I've managed to improve over time. Things like little efficiencies inside of Shadow Keep and Beyond Light go a long way to strengthening my mental fortitude, and rewatching this is a delight in its own right. But either way, I finish the encounter and move on to where my life was bound to become a living hell. In this room with the knights, ascending the wall is a problem. I've tried many different methods, but actually learned a better method from someone who underwent my challenges, rose to the occasion. You see, I said if someone could complete my gauntlet of D2 Witch Queen challenges, I would give them a custom Riley Reloaded Challenger Seal shirt. Comes with its own title, but this time it would be gilded. And my god, only two people rose to the occasion. Don't do it now though, because I ain't making this shit no more. <laughs> but a tip I learned was that ascending this wall with Salvation's Grip is actually a pretty solid method compared to what I was doing before. But seeing as I have no ammo for it, I return to orbit and reload my checkpoint to give myself some of that guardian lifeblood. I use a grenade launcher to clear out the knights on the other side and know that this jump is too far for me to cross. And if I switch to my eager edge sword, I will lose all my ammo in the conversion and be in the exact same boat I was in in the first place. So what I ultimately decided to do was run backwards in the level to see if there was something I could find and lo and behold the fucking flag still remained meaning I could banner up and get a full stack of ammo for this first part then it was a pants shitting jump across the chasm <laughs> Run out of ammo once again on my ascent, return to orbit, plant a banner, come back to this spot and try to ascend the wall. I ding my chrome dome on the top of the fucking hive architecture, which is something that happens quite often now that I think about it. How many times I've floated towards a ledge and the tiniest of spikes would make me pull a 180. Why is everything that's lethal in this game an animation? And I'm free to once again try climbing this wall. I finally scale to the top, enter the exterior of Savathun's ship, use eager edge to cross the first gap, and it's here where something terrible happens. Right in my stride when everything is going extremely well. I pull the most rally reloaded move in fucking existence, man. <laughs> Instead of taking the safe route and trying to jump across with salvations, the monkey mind activates and I just full send that bitch. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Riley? Oh, it hurts. I like how I just watch myself for a moment thinking about it. I accidentally pressed jump in that panic too. It's not on purpose. That shit is reactionary. It's ingrained so deep in me. It's basically muscle memory at this point to try and save myself when I take on a fall. What's this? The light. It came back. <laughs> <laughs> We're free. No, I'm just kidding. But you know my guardian has got to be excited for that flash of power. Probably took all the juice she has to float for a couple seconds. But with that death, my hopes were once again shattered. I still don't know why in my right mind would I pull that maneuver. There's got to be a thousand better ways to approach that jump. And of course your boy decided the yeet and skeet method was the best. I'd have greater odds of winning a fight against Mike Tyson in his prime than fucking hitting that pincushion on the head. I would have had greater odds of the Antichrist, Mr. Beast, <laughs> taking away my eyesight so I didn't have to witness my own plays again. But with my my crushing defeat solidified, the diarrhea stain on my positive attitude that was Shadow Keep was once again on my hit list, so I rewatch my favorite cutscene, play through all of Shadow Keep and Beyond Light, and when I finally return to the Witch Queen, I am viciously gunned down by the Cabal and the Arrival. This was all in one sitting, mind you, after all that Shadow Keep and Beyond Light, your boy was slipping. The only thing that this affirms to me is that Harambe was an inside job by Big Gorilla to sabotage me at my fucking camp. <laughs> Alright, and what is only mere minutes for you is our of agonizing bounty grinding for my donkey ass. It's here where we return to the outside of Savathun's ship, and 
I once again decide that I'll live fucking life on the eager edge and refuse to learn from my previous mistakes by launching myself in at the tiniest ledge I'd have to hit in order to progress. Savathun must have known I was coming and greased this bitch up because your boy almost slid right off. But thankfully, I caught myself just before I fell thanks to the mantle and was free to continue my good work. Honestly, I hope whoever made the mantle feature at Bungie is living a life of opulence and excellence. I fling myself across the large gap and enter the first fight with the Lucent Brood's version of a guardian. This fight goes well as they take huge damage from my cataclysmic, but that doesn't stop me from running away the moment they pop a super. Truly, the Crucible has taught me well, and I managed to smoke him before he even knew what was coming. He dropped heavy and I commit a war crime by severing his immortality. Yeah, sure lady, that, that's the one point that you stopped to think about what you did, not the thousands of hive you genocided on your way up here, or the Cabal, or the Elixni inside of Beyond Light that were just trying to live on a new world, because this got whirlwind and there was absolutely no reason for us to stop in there and just start blasting. But in this room, things get a little dicey. I try to make a tactical runaway, and right as I turn around, I see the Grim Reaper. These curse thralls must have been trained by John Wick, because he popped up behind me without warning, causing me to kiss him directly on the deck. <laughs> Even though this defeat makes me want to take a bath with the most graceful of kitchen appliances, that being the humble toaster, I must persevere. It is as the good Dysius Jin says, sometimes you're the bug, sometimes you're the windshield. So I got ready to respawn at the Cosmodrome to head towards Shadowkeep. Wait, I remember dying. I should be back at the Cosmodrome. Why the hell am I back on Europa? Hey, uh, what? I think it's about time we finally met face to face. This is the last time I can help you, and I need you to perform. There's more to this than you know. You're witnessing the birth of a new age. Proverb from one of them fancy books a warlock I used to travel with carried around. Held on to it. Kept it close. You could tell that even when the dark was closing in around them, they truly believed him. One of the most courageous bookkeepers I had ever met. Had to be. Back in those days. Used to be that. Just as easily as you extend your hand to the unknown. There was a blade. Waiting. Right there in the darkness to cut it off. Hard to venture out. The only thing you're guaranteed is restless nights or the wrong end of a bullet. I was hesitant, to say the least, about traveling with company. Things were easier when you didn't have anything weighing you down. Traveled like that for what feels like centuries. It damn well might have been. Out on the frontier, you learn to read people, but most importantly, to be cautious. It wasn't always the fallen that would jump you in your sleep, and I learned my lessons quick. Told me she needed help getting to a spot I'd traveled to many times before. same tent for many nights out on that trail. Things were good for a time. Maybe you could say that I got soft, but it was nice not sleeping with one eye open for once. Even when I should have. The sound of screams jolted me awake in my tent. I awoke to one of the meanest fallen archons I have ever seen, dragging my friend screaming out into the darkness. She wore the armor of the sea, and I was not enough for them to beat her within an inch of her life. Fire burned within deeper than anything. 
something I'd felt for a long time. I can still remember the heat burning on my hip as I drew. Six five. Three shots. No survivors. I hold her in my arms. Not enough light in the system to undo the damage they did. Just before the last spark danced in her eyes, she handed me her favorite book. Blood on the page. It was some kind of code filled in by the blood on her hands. You're witnessing the birth of a new age. Sometimes you can only see things clearly when the dark is at its thickest. What do you mean you can't help me anymore? Are you how I've been coming back? Please don't tell me the next death is the big one. I'll always be watching. I need to be careful until I know what's happening. There's only one person I know of who's involved in all this that might have an answer for me. Vesper, I need your help. Been a while since I've seen a fallen captain of that caliber. Oh, hold the fuck up. How the fuck did you know my name? I don't get that to anybody. You know, there's this place in the last city called Cocktail Cockatoos. They serve coffee there. They always write my name wrong. It's supposed to be Vesper, not Vexper. Stupid idiots. Look, I'm caught in some kind of loop. I know what direction I need to head in, and it all culminates with a witch queen. But every time I get killed, I wind up back at the Cosmodrome where I first rose. We've been through this hundreds of times. There was one time I came back and you told me your name. I even know about the Spectres. You know about the Spectres? The shitty color scheme on your ghost? Hey, it's a great color scheme! <laughs> <clears throat> One second. <clears throat> Alright, I believe you. I think the Spectre met me face to face. Told me that this is the last time they can help me. I'm worried that means next time I die. I won't be coming back. Do you know anything about a cloaked hunter? Ripped me right out of death and pulled me straight to Europa to warn me? Uh, the Spectre wouldn't do that. You're too idiotic. They know what they're doing, though. They're more of a positive force. Wait, you're not sponsored by Power Color, are you? Sponsored? What the hell are you talking about? Okay, okay. Good, good, good. I was just checking. <laughs> Come on, Gary. Come on, Gary. Clutch it up, clutch it up. <laughs> oh! Yeah, baby! <clears throat> <clears throat> right. Spectres, when I look into your soul and focus, there would appear to be... N nothing? That's a good thing though, right? No, no, I mean there's nothing there. There's no spark, no flame, it's... It's all empty and hollow. As if there's a piece of you torn right out. Did so much damage. Just nothing you can do to repair it. Not even the blessing of light can save that. Whoever that cloaked hunter is that you mentioned. They know what they're doing, and they know it well. I'm afraid that they're also right. The next death you have may just be your final one. Is there anything I can do to fix this? No, no, I'm sorry. There's nothing you, me, or anyone else can do. They're in way too deep. You know which path you have to take. I suggest taking it. What are you going to do now, Titan? I've got a Witch Queen to slay. If this is the last time we meet. Thank you. For everything you've done. Good luck. You'll definitely need it. You're going to blow yourself up again, aren't you? Whoa, whoa, hold on. I did not just give you an emotional speech and help you out in your situation just for you to lacerate me with your words. This, this is horrendous. 
God, people nowadays. Don't you know who I am? Two pants. Guardian down. It's here I find myself back at the arrival, where in which I do everything pretty much one to one with the first time that we walk through here. Just only this time I bring a Hot Wheels Fury like no other. Thanks to having to replay both campaigns over and over again, my brain is sufficiently aneurized. I've got 90% of the lines memorized at this point. I am 100% sure that my life would be 10 times better if the men in black showed up and hit me with the neuralizer so I could forget how many times I've been through Shadowkeep. But as the strongest people in my life would say, It is what it is. I like to think that I bring a sort of chaotic shit's terrible, but you can do it if you try kind of vibe to the community. I finally finish off the hive light bearer and gather up the final tributes, allowing me to finally progress. I break it down as the portal opens because this was damn near agonizing, and I enter the throne world. I shred my way across the throne world and enter this arena with Savathun. Bad move opening the door to let Papa Ryan. I'm like a vampire, can't come in unless you invite me. Time for Halloween! <laughs> Don't come to my house or else I'll suck your dick out of blood. Basically signing your death warrant at this point. Armageddon? More like Armageddon the fuck out of here the moment I sense danger. <laughs> I use my forerunner to kill Savathun quickly from the back of the room and walk right into her trap as she places a chest. Damn, how did she know my one weakness? The best way to defeat me is to just put some loot out. It's like when the Richter laid out all those fake exotics. If he just let me take one of those home with me, put a bit of a delayed reaction on them, I would have went to unbox one and get nuked in my kitchen. <laughs> in my microwave. Ah, the good old pipe bomb in the mail technique gets him every time. Due to my foolish nature and being easily persuaded by fat loot, Savathun shows no mercy as she hits the teleport button, voting me off of Total Drama Island and planting me like a fucking tree. Weird how my Titan can survive getting thrown off of Savathun's ship at Mach 8, yet my ankles get ass to crossed harder than YouTube when a twab comes out. Oh now you got a fucking vibranium skeleton! We then get a cutscene teaching us about what Savathun was up to when she went even harder than we could ever hope to in the transmog system, and crammed an 11 foot giant winged demon-like visage into a balding old guy. A little bald spot? A little baldy? You're bald. Everybody hates you for it. It's disgusting. Honestly, kind of a downgrade, but I respect the hustle. When the going gets tough, sometimes you gotta cram yourself into a guy. Oh shoot, wait, wait. We then speak to Ikora, who calls me strange for entering an active war zone and picking up random floating junk, but I'm a little loot goblet. I'll sniff out an engram like an airport drug dog. What's that? You got a purple? Give it to me, son of a bitch! You can find me out in the parking lot at 3 a.m. scrounging for anything shaped like a pentagonal dodecahedron. And if that nerd shit is too wild for you, I'm talking D12. Dice. Roll Throw them. Stick them in your- <laughs> Rereading my wild- my writing is a wild card, I swear. I then instructed to complete one of the only three actions us guardians can fully understand. And no, I'm not talking about standing on a plate or dunking an item. I hold a button to place my fragment into the obelisk, craft the enigma, and return to speak to Ikora, who then sends us off to one of the most peaceful missions Papa Rai can get his hands on. His rest and retreat before the communion shows why it isn't afraid to throw hands by spin jitsu kicking me directly in the nipples. But for now, I can rest easy knowing that I beat the arrival without the light. The investigation is always my favorite mission. Investigation gang, where are you at? Gotta rise up against all these communion loving fools. It's such a beautiful little mission no matter what challenge I'm doing. Even if it's a challenge that makes me want to stick a fork into an outlet. Like in the no grenade shatter die video which probably took years off my life. Thankfully this time I'm coming through here I have weapons, gear, and not a single ounce of fear. No more are the days where I deal the damage equivalent of taking out the garbage and having something wet touch your leg. Now I am free to hold back. No mercy. This is probably the most advanced my weaponry has ever been. Just look at the way I blow away this hive guardian. My man barely even gets a chance to teleport in before he gets posted in the missing section of a milk cart. Believe it or not, the hardest part of this entire mission was figuring out how to beat the jumping puzzle at the beginning here. I slammed my face into the wall a couple times, but eventually figured out that I could get extra height if I swapped everything into mobility. But upon rewatching this footage, I could have done what I've been doing the entire time throughout 90% of my playthrough of Shadow Keep and Beyond Light again and just equip my cat. Alice mini tool because I found out the peacekeeper exotic boots boost your movement speed when you bust out an SMG. It completely slipped my mind though, but I had enough mobility to grab this statue's arm and head inside the tunnels. I cross with ease till I hit the end where they placed a wall just higher than my maximum jump height. But thankfully this thrall statue here was downright mega minding, packing them advanced thoughts and had a huge ass cranium I could spider monkey my ass on top of. I goomba stomp him like any other class would trying to do a jumping puzzle at the same time as their hunter friends and continue on my journey.
The rest of this mission is much the same story. I spit straight hellfire upon the hive at the gates, slapping them straight silly. Smoke that goddamn salmon. God, I'd love to be a bear in this water catching salmon. I activate the gate and get ready for the final fight of the mission. You see it's short and sweet, much like my wiener. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Have you ever wondered why my gameplay is so stable? It's because I use that shit like a goddamn tripod. Dug it, dug it, dug it, dug it. That's the sound of my bullets firing out while I stand there. Stabilized. Focus in my lane. You see, I'm flourishing. <laughs> I just stopped writing at 3 a.m. It's a slaughter in there, though. The Riley Reloaded Hot Wheels War Crime Engine had all pistons firing when it stepped into this Mexican standoff. The barrier guards got melted down with the might of Cataclysmic and the Forerunner combo. And when the dust is settled, I turn my rage upon the ghost. That's the difference between our ghosts and theirs. They say we ain't afraid no gun smoke. Return to the light, little fellow. Death. She comes for us all. When I rolled in, yours just happened to show up a little bit quicker. I then rock it off to the Hive Guardian. That's not to be resurrected because Finch decided he would be better just rotting as a corpse. Still love who's just smoking in the back. Laid clean out in the Yamcha pose. My man died a family guy. <laughs> it's one of the finer joys in life. But upon finishing my conversation with the only Hive ghost that's thought about their actions, I beat the investigation without the light. The ghost is usually where things begin to fall apart in these runs. But thankfully, due to being overleveled in an absolute brick shithouse of a guardian, honed in the fires of a thousand deaths, there was little this mission could do to stop me, raining down pure Canadian maple syrup testosterone from the sky, using the spirit of my war moose to guide my bullets into every scorn and hive that dared touch my igloo. Precision damage was the name of the game here, and I was about to deal it without remorse. I mow down the wizard at the front gate, shoot the tactical wall-mounted testicles, turn every single one of the loose and brood and scorn in this cave into a wet smear on the wall. Once everything is nice and cooked, I head into yet another platforming section. This has the highest risk of sending me right back to Shadow Keep. It's in this cave that I found out I have the jump height of a Redditor and wouldn't be able to grab the most meager of ledges. This is nothing that a hot swap to mobility can't fix, and with my career in the NBA now secured, I could continue on my way. I take my time platforming as best I can, but when I land on this ledge and my health almost evaporates, I nearly shit an entire human-sized brick. See, this entire run is teaching me patience. Once I walk out of here, I'm going to be like a monk, enter a 30-year trance, abstaining from everything and honing my destiny abilities. Food? Glimmer sustains me now. Water? I hydrate with the blood of a thousand fallen captains. Sex? What the fuck kind of exotic is that? <laughs> I even waited to heal before I jumped again. Even though tons of people are happy about them nerfing the architects, I gotta say that I'm actually a bit sad that they're taking away the great equalizer. I love getting exploded in games. One of my favorite things is dying to the most obscure means. It just makes for a good time. How will I sleep at night knowing there's no one around to eager edge me into a wall, sending my soul straight to fucking God? I tell you, probably pretty damn good. <laughs> That's why I'll miss it. Keeps me grounded, keeps me real. I love when developers toy with players a bit and aren't afraid to get a little bit wacky with them. I'm a lover of Easter eggs and devious designs. The very first time in the Destiny franchise that had taken Phalanx, one of the top predatory animals in this National Geographic episode reared their ugly head, was on the side of a colony ship as you ascended to grab one of Cade's stashes. Bungie knew what they were doing as they placed this son of a bitch directly in your way. You could only flip out, spazzing out like a toddler on crack cocaine in this hallway as you awaited the inevitable outcome. Fighting the Fallen Walker and pretty much any Scorn encounter really got knocked down a peg once they nerfed the Scorn Raiders. We used to take you existing in the same airspace as them as a fucking crime, laser beaming you from across the map with absolutely no mercy. Catch a pixel of your toe sticking out and it was time to put down your controller gamer because your brains are lining the ceiling. The nightmares! <laughs> After I clear out the Scorn, I met with another jumping section that my little legs couldn't get me across. Thankfully, the good old-fashioned Salvation's Grip was there to do the only legitimate purpose it has in this game. I run out of time trying to get on the crystals, causing it to despawn, and I return to orbit. Come back to the mission and hope it gives me some Salvation's Grip ammo and is kind with the checkpoint. I was really hoping it didn't put me at the beginning because that would have been a colossal kick in the dick. I forgot that when you replay missions when you haven't ran them yet, you have to drive all the way to the flag each time you reset the mission. This was probably the most annoying part of the take no damage run I did. Added way more time than it should have. I have eight bullets and I'm not in a bad spot. It's basically a guaranteed climb now. I ascend the outside and begin my fight with the scorn guarding the hole in the ground. This goes well, nothing but broken dead things, corpses, and rubble. Despite the fact that I'm steamrolling most encounters, all it takes is a single cabal canister on the ground to send your boy back nearly seven hours of gameplay. I clear the crystals and look down the well in the center. I try to look for ammo in this room, but eventually give up when there's none to be found and once again attempt my ammo cheese by loading up the mission with the weapon I want. I equip my strongholds for the superior guard because I trust a fall in this game about as much as I trust a titan may not to punch the curse they're all in front of them. And when I reload back in, I'm in the exact spot I left off at and get ready for a good old fashioned leap of faith. I have no idea the capabilities of the guard, if I'm basically forfeiting my life or not, but sometimes
times in life. You just need to throw random bullshit at the wall until it works. And that's exactly how I've gotten to where I am. <laughs> Good lord, that was stressful. Good thing I'm wearing my brown pants today. <laughs> Barely even tickle me. It was at this point I knew that I was basically free to dive off any cliff as long as I was packing some sword ammo and a will of fucking iron. The future is now, old man. Down in the tunnels, I almost get melted by a shrieker, but taking it slow and steady, I'm able to push back the darkness one testicle at a time. I use my blade to cut down the scorn captains and I clear the first boss section. I once again equip my sword, squat up and down in happiness, and descend further into the breach. This time I hit a bit of a ledge which propels me a bit to the left, taking a good bit of health with it. Any faster, I'm pretty sure that would have been it. Physics are definitely the scariest thing in this game. I make my way across the darkness. On the other side, there is a final drop before the boss, which is a rinse and repeat of prior events. I drop down, equip my cataclysmic, and begin my fight with Brutix. Ah, Brutix, my old friend. How many times have we danced this song and dance? I keep my distance and fight like a demon. I remember when this boss came out, the man was downright glitchy as hell. You'd be minding your own business and he would come out of the goddamn walls. Oh, he's in the wall. to drop a lantern directly onto your head. But with the precision damage of my cataclysmic, I almost knock him down a phase in only three shots. I stay on the move and pelt him with Forerunner when I can. Then use the blinding ball sacks to allow me to hammer away on the shields of the captains in the side rooms. I got a bit tense in a couple of moments because I neglected my health, but it wasn't enough to cause our final death. After the last room is cleared, I plant my feet and ready my cataclysmic. Four shots was all it took to end the light bane. I broke it down because spirits were fucking high after I aced this mission like it was nothing. But dirt beneath my heels. Listen to Savathun reflect in the voice in the dark through a memory imprint on Sagira's ghost. And I crouch down because I know, I know what's coming. A mission that takes everything into account. An army of extreme density and power. Advanced verticality and strategy needed to finish the next mission. Battles that would leave me doing everything I can to walk away from it. While this wasn't extremely tough, I learned a lot through the ghost mission. Things that showed me how to survive most of the coming trials I believed I would have. Ikora then tells me, you're a psychic now, and can read the past by touching items. Must be why. When I touch my wiener, all I'm granted with is visions of your mother. And she sends me off to Europa to once again commune with the pyramid. Before we dive into the communion, I decided that I needed to pack a bit more of a punch. Since I'm going to be in a snow zone, I figured I'd cosplay as the White Death and bust out a sniper rifle to pick off the cabal from afar away. Now trust me when I say I'm a beacon of pure organizational skill and expertise. I mean, that right there, that is a beautiful vault. Dado would have a field day in here. Although he'd probably have to kidnap me in real life to make me get rid of my title SMGs though. Anyone who says any less the nine title SMGs is optimal can suck good and hard through my shorts. <laughs> also, two Jade Rabbits. We get two! Take it or leave it! I then bust out the Hot Wheels LMG from deep within my Warlock's pants by dimming it over. Is that a time loss corrective measure in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? Now this is a gun that, while not an exotic, is enough to make you cream good and hard whenever it's shown to those around it. Then to complete the snow operative look, I equip the one-eyed mask, allowing me to get a bit of protection whenever I smoke the clown who landed a couple of bullets on me. I'm not gonna lie to you. I kinda like this fit. It's a curse of mine in Destiny that at any given moment I will equip a new look. I'm kind of addicted to it. Bungie literally put a whole other fucking game in the transmog menu and allowed me to roam free. Every loading screen, I'm swapping fits more than a warlock main, Nova bombing a wall. Gotta get out of those dirty ass clothes I go stomping around alien worlds with. Dirty clothes. Tide loss. <laughs> it's drip or drown in this bitch. Will you drown in the drip or rise from it? I then immediately begin assaulting the cabal from afar as to ensure I won't get obliterated by their blaster cannons. The intro area to the pyramid is a huge fight. This consists of staying on your toes because enemies in this mission hit pretty hard and come at you quick. The biggest threat to my will to live consists of the tanks in the background. They are active and will chase you down at any given opportunity. One missile is all it takes and is more than enough to make sure you're crossed off the Guardian census. The amount of times in my previous runs that I was blasted into the fucking stratosphere made me downright crazy. Had me going straight bananas. <laughs> at one point, it sucked my soul out so much it had me thinking that Shadow Keep was less painful than this. No, insane you gotta be to believe that Shadow Keep is a good time. Now I know how to counter them without so much as a slip. This method is simple. It consists of making like a tree and fucking off the moment your spider senses tingle. Then when you get the chance, just bust out the prestige 10 succession, pimped out into gold camo, and just shoot the jets on the tank from afar. I whittle down the tank pretty well and use my Hot Wheels LMG to clean up the rest, just like the movie How to Train Your Dragon. This gun fucks! <laughs> Damn man, why this trilogy gotta remind me about the passing of time and that I should appreciate the time spent with my loved ones. Existential crisis? Looming dread? 
Red? Thank you, DreamWorks. Very cool. The Cabal stand no chance, though, because I'm dressed for the job. The perfect operative, and I performed like one as well. With Hot Wheels Fury, I secured my ascent into the pyramid. Is this my character progression arc? Where solid planning and proper build crafting for engagements creates easy progression for encounters. It feels wrong. Who even am I anymore? Why am I stuck in traffic? Don't they know? Don't they know who I am? The doctor of poop. That's who I am. In the pyramid, I changed back into my regular gear because being thematic is a part of me. I no longer needed to be protected from the cold and equip my peacekeepers and SMG in order to get that sweet, sweet mobility buff. The pyramid is a naughty boy and despite wanting to commune with me to further both of our goals, the assin stinky decides to dangle an exotic above my head by making this wall slink back every time I get near, holding the goalpost just out of reach. Thankfully though, if I hide around the corner, I can quickly grab hold of it before it buries its head in the sand like an ostrich. Peacekeepers work well, helping me clear the rest of the jumps along the way. I tested the waters first to see if I could make this one, removing that ever so present yeet and skeet method that has been ingrained into my brain since birth. Sadly, after this, I found there was no way to progress unless I had heavy ammo, so I once again went to orbit, Riley reloaded the mission, and headed in with Salvation's grip to see if I could make it across. I pull off this pants-shitting, death-defying leap onto this ledge, and with Peacekeeper's mobility buff, I can cross the platforms easily. Then it's a simple slaying of yet more Red Legion soldiers, because they obviously haven't had enough at this point. Commit yet another gear change to my main set with a quick swap back to Resilience mods, and it was back to mass murdering. <laughs> I kill my way across the stairs and use Salvation's grip to cross this scary section. I hate being this close to a deadly fall. One wrong move and it's right back to my own personal hell of shadow keep. Shit haunts me in my dreams now. You know, I gotta be the only soul in existence that has gotten used to a Salvation's grip. There's two things in Destiny that are like spotting a unicorn, a Salvation's grip enjoyer, and a guardian sporting my Hot Wheels colors. But funnily enough, as I've been making videos, I've been spotting more and more guardians wearing my colors. I even dedicate an entire tab in my Discord server for Hot Wheels Guardian spotted in the wild. Never before has the world been blessed by so much beauty. Oh, give me land, lots of land under starry skies above. Don't miss me. Let me ride through the wide open country that I love. Let me be by myself in the evening breeze And listen to the murmur of the cottonwood trees Send me off forever, but I ask you to please No, Mama, don't you miss me The game sends out hundreds of incinerators, but you see, there was a reason I busted out the Hot Wheels LMG. It's a time loss corrective measure with an adept mod. Big one spec. Not only that, it's got Firefly on it and it's void, so if you're playing a void class with volatile rounds, shit is just premium. To say you shred it being the turd smoker on ad clear is an understatement. While just the mere sound of that combo is enough to make the angels cry, I still know what you're thinking. Hopperai, how did one such as yourself obtain such a devilish weapon? Well, I got greedy and spent all my spoils rolling for a good one. And it has crippled my red border prospects ever since. Damn it, Riley, self-control! I was overpowered for this encounter. I'm blasting away shields like they're nothing, and the incinerators get a taste of my big peener demeanor as I hide at the back of the room and spray them down with my Dugga Dugga machine. Even though my linear fusion rifle, the Hot Wheels Cataclysmic, radiates pure testosterone, and I deliver 50 cc's of directly to the frontal cortex of anything that gets in my way. A huge part of me yearns for the LMG meta, because there's nothing more beautiful than unleashing a hail of bullets upon your foes. One of the reasons why in D2, the sweet business is such a meme. Got 57 more goddamn rounds in this four round magazine. I teach the Imperial Deserter why quitting is a bad idea by bouncing a bullet around in his skull. I then miss some shots on the bridge like the fucking goober I am and I move towards the final boss room. Some dogs chase me on the bridge, but I teach them the value of fist. Despite the blatant animal abuse, I still killed less dogs than PETA and clear the bridge with a snipe to the Colossus's head. Uh, really? <laughs> you wrote that into a word? Then since I know what's coming, I equip my beloved Forerunner once again and headed into the fight with Valus Draugur. In many of my other challenge runs, fighting this boss is like Valus Draugur 
Paul Goering might nuts through a field of broken glass just to soak them in a bath of lemon juice. But because there are so many places to get beam from, and your health can be drained extremely quickly, the literal army that the Cabal unleashes upon you, there's not much that you can do. In the legendary campaign, Jim, Theory, and I were here forever, trying to get through on our first go-through. It didn't help that we were under-leveled, but the real kicker was that due to the player scaling and us having the coordination of an LFG made up of Kindergartians, there was absolutely no way in hell we were gonna get through this the first time. But this time, though, I sling straight fire. My loadout is a monster, and after becoming learned in the ways of the Witch Queen campaign, I am a sight to behold. This is what all these challenges have molded me into. Death incarnate, dispensing Hot Wheels vengeance at an unearthly rate. I shred Valus' health down and do an immunity phase, and what I did to the rest of the enemies in there was just disgusting. I was met with little resistance, allowing me to beat the communion senseless without the light. After I am brain your eyes by the pyramid once again, I speak to Ikora, who's just as perplexed that I am, that the darkness is creepy attempts at communication, and she sends me off to one of my favorite missions inside of the Witch Queen whenever I'm on a challenge run. There are a few things that bring me joy anymore. I've entered late stage warlock syndrome, where after eight years of playing a single class, all you know is that class, and any stint outward is enough to make you suffer. Some serious withdrawals. I've been around so long, I've seen it all. What is left to be nerfed? What is left to be buffed? What is left to sell me in the Eververse store? This game sucks. It's awful. I hate it. Now excuse me. Well, I sink another 3,000 hours in. In all honesty, the game's kind of tight now. Either way, I don't have a problem. You have a problem. Lightless is an amazing way to play. It really makes you appreciate the journey from moment to moment and can make you see things you've undergone with extreme ease and a whole new light. Maybe I'm a bit on the wild side, but I love games that really turn up the heat. Gotta put a little spice on the ribs if you're gonna be barbecuing in my goddamn kitchen. That's it. Nice and hot. Hot and spicy meat. <laughs> yeah, boy. This challenge is a culmination of everything that I've done over the course of the Witch Queen being out for an entire year. Can you believe it? We're already here a year later. Feels like just yesterday I was stomping my donkey ass into the arrival with Theory and Jin for the first time to stare down the Witch Queen and demand my money. Words cannot express how grateful I am to have undergone all these journeys with you. You learn a lot about life when you're constantly banging your head against a wall in hopes of tearing your limits down. I've been through this gauntlet so many times that it's almost second nature to me at this point. I get to the jumping section that I thought was going to be a 50-50 on whether or not I walk away from it. This time, though, I didn't have my salvation's grip loaded, so there was absolutely no way I'd be able to cross the chasm. So I take a trip back to orbit, race back to the flag, and reload the mission. To salt my wounds and punish me for the unspeakable crimes of running out of ammo, Joe Black burned me good by sending me back to the beginning of the mission. It's a good thing that I was only 10 seconds into the mission and hit like Dom's death at the end of Gears of War 3. Hi, Maria! It just isn't fair, man. <laughs> I return to the section I was at before, put absolutely no brakes on this Riley train as I pop the salvations and dive bomb straight for it with reckless abandon. I then switch to my sword, get just enough ammo to swing across and holy- <laughs> I then switch my weapon again and stasis crystal up the wall with the good old salvations grip meta. Fun fact, this gun is blue and orange. No wonder I've gotten so much use out of it. It speaks to me on a personal level. I love you, icy gun. But I'm gonna content vault your ass faster than someone who mentioned Hogwarts Legacy on Twitter. <laughs> So they teaching you at that school these days. Enjoy being bound to your torment while I lock you away with my title, SMGs. Now I won't lie to you about the boss in this arena. I've never seen a legendary boss get their cheeks so sufficiently clapped before. I then dive through a portal and listen to the Witch Queen talk about her plans as Tiny Osiris. Damn, how did the Vanguard not notice he was Savathun? My man literally shrunk. I then talk to Finch, who tells me that I need to go get a piece of the Tablet of Ruin from the Lightblade Strike. But in order to do that, I was gonna need some backup. Look, no matter what the Vanguard says, I'm not going to stop. I have to see this through. So, uh, saw this, uh, this bounty on the bounty board by the Vanguard. I applied for it because it was uh, to protect a lightless guardian. I'm surprised I got in. Cause I'm a little pro in the violence. Fuck up. Back the fuck up. I'm gonna be honest. I only took this bounty because it said I can get an exotic out of this. But uh, imagine not having the light. So uh, L cope ratio uh, mauled seethe L and uh, yeah, cry about it. This is the best the Vanguard could send. <sighs> I'm going to die here, aren't I? The light blade strike is an easy one, and thanks to using members of Chronophobia to assist me in not being turned into a stain on the wall by randos, it was a breeze. I love my Discord server. Lots of great people I've met along the way. We even have our own branded podcast hosted by Sovereign. It's just neat seeing something branch out from a couple of friends on a server to having people all fly the same flag. Two badges in this world that I wear with honor. Chronophobia and my Hot Wheels guardians. And from that heavenly plane, these two A-tier lads descended to carry Papa Rye through the gauntlet. 
gifting me my freedom. They babied me the entire way, keeping me healed, guarding me. When I rode the gondola thanks to being a certified scrub lord, they left my donkey ass on the platform and took care of the rest while I stood there, gloriously, with my thumb up my ass. Truly a gamer pog moment. The next moment of fear came when the gondola disappears and you suffer yet another fall. But I was prepared with my loadout set to take the brunt of the damage. These lads moved in like a security force, cleaving a pathway through everything that stood in our way. And when Papa Rye was in danger, it was a certified- Get down, Mr. President! I take the fall into the boss room much the same way I take everything else, and scuttle around the arena while cursed thralls pop up everywhere. Resisting the monkey mind is tough because nearly every brain cell I had was firing, telling me to eager edge directly into the fucking tickle time bomb. But thankfully, I resisted the urge to splatter myself all over the arena. I then committed the ancient act of hiding in the corner while Extron and Cosmic Essence, the two big dick bazoozos, held the line as I cowered in fear. I mean valiantly stood my ground, and after a hard-fought battle on my part, where I truly went above and beyond in my sheer combat capability, we slayed Alec Hull. I collected my Tablet of Ruin and headed off to the mirror to unlock the secrets that lie within. I bring good old-fashioned fists to the reflections of Savathun, stand on top of her head like the little shoulder pet I am, accidentally pulled a Bill Cosby and headed off to talk with Ikora about our next move. She's just as perplexed as I am for what to do next. Either way, she gives me a shitty rocket launcher and sends me off to complete the cunning. The cunning has me descending into the Temple of Savathun to steal her worm, so I can break into it with my psychic powers. The descent into the Hive's Temple is fraught with scorn and side wall scrotums to bust in order to light my path. As a professional Destiny player and a man with nothing but pure testosterone pumping through his veins, I would like to say, <laughs> balls. <laughs> I then use my range advantage and superior firepower to blast my way across the bridge. With the power of Cataclysmic and the Forerunner, nothing stood a chance as I decimated a pathway through the score. I then make a mad dash through the tunnels until I reach the area before the massive drop. This area is scary due to the screams that come running at you. Now I like to think that fear no longer exists in my body. Where there was once joy, there is now only pain. But nothing will put the fear of God into me quicker than SCREAM! Despite almost getting nuked into Shadowkeep's icy cold grips, I managed to clear this room fairly quickly. Then it was on to the second challenge of this run, that being the Great Descent into the Temple's approach. Every time I drop down from anywhere, I fear what may come in the coming moments. Even though this sword and stronghold combination gives me enough resistance to survive most falls, I still grit my teeth whenever there's physics involved. All it would take is a single pebble for Bungie's physics engine to come out of nowhere and stab me in the kidneys, launching me directly into a wall. Odin was with us and I survived my journey. Then it was yet more genocide as I enacted penance on those that stood in my way and begun my fight with the boss. On Legendary, this boss cranks straight 90s, going for the victory royale. Hits like a freight train. You get caught out in the open, either replanting me like Minecraft We I kill the boss, use Salvation's grip to ascend the wall and grab the worm. The Ahamkara illusion compared to Riven is a certified punk ass. No health pool, no wipe mechanic, and probably no bitches because this guy is a giant lizard. After the Ahamkara meets an unfortunate end, aka me, I hit the NOS on my pike, dodging all the bullets. It's ingrained in my brain to avoid hitting enemies in this section because normally I limit myself with challenge restrictions. Either way, I barely skirt death on my way out of the pits, but ultimately come out on top, causing me to beat the cunning without the light. The next step involves activating the mirror, which almost kills me. Ooh! Bungie mad evil for that one. And I return to the Enclave to watch mommy and daddy fight about what to do with the looming threat. The last chance, the very last step before the entirety of this run comes to a head. One more push before the final showdown. One of the things that has me most excited for Lightfall is the legendary campaign. I love the difficulty that comes with it. I love games that test me. Things like From Software games. I like being on the ropes while I play and overcoming great odds through nothing but sheer tenacity and willpower. With my level being as jacked as it is though, I still do extremely well inside of this mission. The damage is high. This is another classic example of Bungie adding in insane verticality to make sure that we we get the most out of the sandbox that they've created. While I love it, I will admit that it is horrifying when you're running something like this. When I reach the top, I'm hit with the old blocker. That being running out of goddamn ammo once again. You know what's funny? I watched Jin replay through Destiny 1 a while ago, and while he was fighting Oryx in the Regicide mission, some confusing happened. My man ran out of primary ammo. That's terrifying in this day and age. It's like catching a ghost at the corner of your eye. <laughs> We're getting a clear photo of Sasquatch. Either way, though, I ascend the wall, use Salvation's grip to guide my path, and actually come up with a better method to get past this part. Just skip the swinging pendulum altogether by scaling the wall. Life good. With my peacekeepers, I risk it for the brisket and launch myself. The mobility buff is more than enough to carry me through the jumps. Where have these been all my life? As a warlock main, I'm about as mobile as your average min-maxer. <laughs> I'm not damn mobile. When we get to the banner, the forerunner, callous mini tool, and cataclysmic erase anything that even remotely stands in my way. As I've said many times during this 
this playthrough, combat capability is no problem. I evaporate the Hive Guardian, demolish my way across the bridge, blast the crusty cum off the gate controls, and bring that same old devastation onto the wizard blocking my way forward. I annihilate my way up the tower, leaving no survivors, but as I mid-battle with the Hive, in a very, very vulnerable position, something downright nasty happens to your boy. <laughs> Mother of fucking <laughs> Just as I'm slapping some serious ass in this arena, Trollzord and Howie decided to join me, taking the acolyte I was just fighting and cranking that bitch to 11. A normal punch from this absolute turbo beefcake of a titan would've caused me to fold these acolytes clothes. Would I'm still in them? <laughs> <laughs> then it was like slapping them with a wet towel. This causes me to take some serious damage, but in a move that I can only call pure genius on my part, activated clairvoyance, I return to orbit just before they can kill me. I don't even want to know how close I was to death in this screen because it had to have been extremely fucking close for that to unfold like that. I wrote to them in text chat saying they absolutely scared the ever-loving fuck out of me and decided to take a brief trip to the tower with both of them to unwind a little before I got back in there. And then these ass clowns then tell me this is a lesson for leaving my fire team open. I swear to you, I now keep that shit locked down tighter than your dad's liquor cab. Only way you're getting into my fire team is if you bring the motherfucking lockpicking lawyer to this shit. One on slot one, two is by me. <laughs> that had me shook, my man. <laughs> I then hit a screenshot with the lads to commemorate this learning experience and return to continue my good work. I return to the same spot I was in before, now back at peak physical damage, and I kill everything in this room. And when I get back to the tower, I realize that I have to move fast in order to climb up with my limited ammo. I failed a few times to climb this, but but this time, I'm using salvations to ascend as best I can. I only have 30 seconds and limited ammo to make it to the top. Every time I fail, I need to refresh my ammo pool so it's another trip to orbit and a drive back to the flag. With some decisive salvations grip and Peacekeeper SMG action, I climb the final rung in this gargantuan ladder and plant the flag before the boss. The final boss fight is a breeze. A flag to refresh my ammo and not a single sign of somewhere I could get killed by the physics engine. The only thing left to do was murder my way through. And murder I did. The Hot Wheels LMG smoking nearly the entire time as it was eaten up by the rain of bullets I was unleashing in that room. This is the fastest I think I've ever done this mission in these challenges. In order to grab the Sevathun's crystal, I gotta do a bit of parkour trickery, but with the shard claimed, it was finally time to return to the mirror to see what Sevathun was hiding this entire time. Just when you think Bungie has shown their entire deck, they roll out some of the most gorgeous cinematics in gaming history that tell an ominous yet beautiful story, making you wonder about the mystery and intrigue that is sure to come. We've come a long way from this shitty writing. <laughs> to frighten children. Lately, those tales have stopped. Now, the children are frightened anyway. Even Oryx is a lot more cringe than I remember when I was watching Jin play the Regicide mission. He speaks like a shit poster. If you call darkness is the end of your evolution. This is a gift. Let my will set you free. Cannot stop me. Edge so sharp I cut the vein of my d <laughs> How the f does YouTube even allow me on this site? I'll be doing something right. It is amazing what Bungie has been capable of creating recently, and as we draw closer and closer to the end, it's things like this that I will look fondly on and remember as a journey worth fighting for. Sevathun then appears, causing me to make a retreat, but not before making the most goofy ass jump. We then attend a Vanguard meeting, and I also very much love this scene. Bungie has been so good with characters lately that everyone is believable and nuanced. You see so much improvement from before that it is literally night and day. Zavala and Ikora were boards for years without much depth, but now after each season, showing their strengths and weaknesses, and only improving the narrative as we move further and further towards the final shape, it is crazy to look back at what they've managed to do with something that many would have considered to be unsalvageable only a few mere years ago. It shows that if you put in the work and try your best, anything is capable of change for the better. Something I find comforting in my hours of need. Hell, if No Man's Sky and Destiny 2 can do it, maybe I can too. But with the stakes being as high as they are, I tighten my lightless cabals, menacingly walk towards the camera like I'm hopped up on creatine. And holy shit, is that the Festival of the Lost Decorations? Damn right, <laughs> you've been holding on to this challenge for a long ass time. We then watch Savathun get corrupted by the darkness because of the looming threat of the God Wave. I've been through this song and dance so many times that every time I see this cutscene, I can only think about the God Wave line I used ages ago whenever I see it. Honestly gotta be one of my favorite lines in any of my videos. And from my ass, a God Wave. <laughs> I can be happy with my own writing. Don't get better than that on this channel. And with the deck 
Jack finally shown. It was time to complete the ritual and close this whole adventure up. All right, here we go. One final dive into the breach to say goodbye to the end of an era. The final battle to close off one of my most daunting challenges yet and a year of unbelievable growth. I'm honestly amazed standing here today. From every minor slip up to every major bump in the road, through everything, we've always found a way to triumph over all of the odds. And I can't tell you how much you being here and being a part of this whole thing is to me. I chased dreams when I was hungry, tried my hardest to love when I was lost, and tore my soul apart trying to fix things I couldn't even begin to understand how to fix. Overcoming your limits is tough, and sometimes things don't work out the way you want them to. And in my own experience, sometimes good things don't come to those that pour every ounce of heart and soul into what they believe in. The world can be a cruel and different place, and I've seen it, felt it firsthand, almost faded away into obscurity. I can't count the amount of times I've been beaten down, exhausted, and lost inside my head, with the only thing holding me together being the chance that tomorrow would prove to be better. And I've seen too many good people give up because the current seems like it's too much to stand against, sweeping them away. And the reason I get so sentimental in these challenge runs is because I've tried my best to show you that things can be different, that they might be tough, and it may feel like the walls are closing in around you, bleeding you dry at every chance you get. But if you just make that final push, give yourself the goddamn bravery and respect to face your troubles head up, and there's gotta be a fucking light in that darkness somewhere. The only chance you and I have in hell to see if the grass is greener on the other side is to be there. And you bet your ass that I'll be there better than I ever thought I could be. And I'd be honored if you were there too. So let's stand our ground for the final time this year. Dig in our heels, raise our cataclysmic, and stare down the Witch Queen. The opening section gets the good old-fashioned grenade cataclysmic deletion protocol. Ikora shows us why Bungie Netcode is powered by a single mouse running on a treadmill by using the Nova Bomb animation, lagging for a moment, and then throwing the purple beam. You can tell she's definitely been spending time in the Crucible. It ain't nothing working. The bridge is a mad dash into the temple. We are demonic in these fights. The power of unrelenting on my SMG causes my health to be secure whenever I'm mauled by a pack of thralls, and the ogres take impressive damage from my forerunner. It's awesome seeing how honed my titan is after all this fighting. Everything I've done in Destiny is coming to a head here in our final showdown. All the skill I've learned throughout my challenge runs as I snuff out the light of the Hive Guardian at the end of the bridge. I equip my sword to survive the fall into this arena, take my time fighting the enemies in here and once again show utter combat mastery as I fully utilize my entire arsenal. I chop up the knights at the top with my arc sword, forerunner the shriekers, and when I need to dunk the orbs, I walk them off the ledge and quickly switch to my sword in order to survive the fall. There's a lot of dicey moments in this fight where I get a bit braver than usual, causing my health to dip dangerously close to the final death. But I then dunk the final orb. <laughs> we head outside and face an onslaught of hive that requires a bit more patience and strategic planning to get through. The battle was a tough one that I barely made it out of, but I landed the headshot shot with Forerunner, equip my sword, and fly into the elevator to go up to Savathun's bedchambers. Bungie decides that they like to give me a fucking heart attack by dropping me when I'm near the top and waiting until the last possible second to catch my donkey ass. You playing some sick games, Blackburn? Cut the shit! <laughs> Plant the flag, rush up to Savathun, and dodge as best we can while pelting her in the cranium with Forerunner. It does impressive enough damage that as long as I'm cautious, I can survive. That doesn't stop Savathun's Nova Bomb from launching me and almost planting me into a wall. This is insanely close to a physics death. That's the goddamn Grim Reaper right there, and I just cheated his ass. I know from my previous adventures into the Witch Queen that the enemies will spawn at one side once her health gets low enough, and then alternate once it reaches another threshold. But if you clear out one side, you won't get bombarded by the other when they pop in. I deal enough Halo Legacy damage to knock her into retreat, and when the Hive Guardians spawn in, I laser the Ogre on the other side to clean up the battleground for me to maneuver around. The Hive Guardians got really close to killing me multiple times, but I make good retreats and fight from my range advantage whenever I get the chance. Returning them all back into death's cold grasp. Savathun returns once again, but with three cataclysmic shots and a forerunner bolt to the brain, she is killed with relative ease. We now enter the final showdown. This goes as per usual with me collecting Glassbreaker, heading into the mirror dimension to cut the threads that ensnare the Traveler by smoking the wizards, then repeating. When I return, I put good old Cosmic's trick to work by sniping the wizards in the tower with a bow, so I won't have to deal with the platforming sections as a lightless guardian. This spawns in the projections of Savathun that I can just slay right there and move on to the next one. Once all the threads are cut, it's time for the final fight. I kill two wizards to get my two times thread cutter bonus and use it to stand on the side and whittle down Savathun. But things are not always as they seem. And when you get comfortable, the rug can be pulled clean out from underneath you. And it was in this fight that I was caught off guard. Where am I? Is it over? You, uh... 
You fucking choked it. <laughs> Come on, you you throw it at the end. I swear to God, L ratio sucks to fucking suck. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You are extremely dead, though. This can't be it. I was so close. If I'm dead, how the hell am I still around? Answer me! Your ghost is on the other side, clinging onto what remains of you as you fade out. They're a uh, strong little guy. Loyal, too. Mother of God, you even painted them in my Wait. colors! You're the one who's been attached to me, following my every move. The voice I heard through the vibrations in the darkness when I was inside of the pyramid on Luna. The one Vesper talked about. Just how long have you been watching me? I've been around a long time. Every bullet fired, every small step that led to a smaller victory. Everything that brought you here to this point. If a curse thrall snuck up on you, I was the hand that nudged you out of the way. Gotta admit, you boy is a bit shit with the timing sometimes, and I'm a bit drawn to their glowy thinking caps. Why now? Why did you come to me now? To laugh at the fact that I couldn't save them? That everyone I ever cared about is going to die because I wasn't enough? What kind of sick game are you playing? No, you'll... you'll have to forgive me. I am a bit new to this being serious thing. I tried my best to learn how to empathize. But I can't imagine what it's like to have a beacon of raw, unyielding testosterone walking in your shadow every step of the way. I wanted to say that I get it. What it's like when you only have one life left to live, and you don't know if it'll be enough to accomplish everything that you wanted to finish. You know, you remind me of myself. We make so many mistakes along the way, and I'm amazed that we stumbled our way to where we're at. I just wanted to see you do your best. That's all I ever want for everyone around me. Now my methods might not be the greatest, and I pride myself on learning from failing upwards, but I tried. I really did in the end. You were amazing out there! Honestly, nothing quite like what you've managed to do. I watched you get gunned down, fall to your death, exploded, break your fucking ankles on the pipes! Oh, for the love of God, the pipes! <laughs> and yet somehow, after everything, you still managed to get back up and unleash hellfire on everything that stood in your way. Rise against that unyielding current to meet your destiny with nothing but determination and fury. Even after all of that, everything I put you through, it got me thinking that if you could do it, then maybe I could learn from you as well. I've been wanting to meet with you for a while just to tell you something that people like us don't ever get the common courtesy of being told once in our lives. But I'm proud of you, kid. And if everything you've achieved isn't enough, if you look back at the end of the day and wonder if this was all worth it, or if you should have just laid down in death and accepted defeat. Just know that you've made a difference for a lot of people, and I'm glad that you didn't. I just wish I could have done more than this. Not the pipes though, that was all you. I ain't taking a fall for that shit. I understand what it's like. Even when you can't depend on yourself, for what it's worth, your voice was a comfort in the dark, you know? Damn, managed to read right through me, eh? Cut right through the bravado. Can't give up. The people of the city need me. That's the goddamn spirit. And you're not gonna like what's coming next. I made a deal with Dell. He's the one that's been bringing you back. And I asked for a big favor. And you better believe that this calls for a bigger price. What did you do? You get one more shot at this. And this time, I won't be lurking in the dark, guiding your every hand, or will I ever again. But if anyone can finish this, you better believe it's you. Whatever it costs, take it back. I've been Papa Rai. Thank you for having me as your Hot Wheels provider. And remember, what would you do if you only had one life left to live?
I did it right. It's over. The Hot Wheels man isn't coming back. He can't save you now. Sold you out for the first chance he got. Finally, you start pulling your way. Made me wait long enough before you made yourself worth something. And just like that, he drops you like you're nothing. That's not true. He spoke to me at the end. What the hell kind of deal did you cut him? Man's not good at making deals. You should really be grateful for what you have. You don't know what kind of doors you might accidentally open. One last revive is all it took to exchange cutting his grip off of you. I've been after you for a while. Lots of bodies buried to get to you. What the hell do you want from me? It's more to this than you know. And by the time we're finished, you're gonna wish you stay dead. We've got work.